Monday morning sunshine beaming down on Sergey Revin uh, as he uh, acclimates himself to a gravity environment for the first time in four months. And uh, here comes Bill Acaba as a flight engineer out of the Soyuz spacecraft, completing his second flight into space 13 days aboard the space shuttle Discovery in March of 2009 on the STS-119 mission, now home after four months aboard the International Space Station. Russian uh, nurses and uh, NASA medical personnel uh, attending uh, to Akaba. He is surrounded uh, by NASA personnel. Mike Serber, the uh, Director of Human Spaceflight Operations, not in the field of view at the moment. Peggy Whitson and Bob Bankin, the new uh, NASA Chief Astronaut, uh, standing behind the Kaaba. Uh, <laughs> and uh, with the extraction of Joe Akaba, now in his uh, reclining chair, we have NASA Public Affairs Officer Josh Byerly with us from the landing site just north of Arkalik. Josh, uh, if you can hear me, uh, what's happening out there? Well, Rob, we honestly could not have asked for uh, better weather out here today. The temperature is really good. The crew is, is obviously enjoying this weather. Joe Acaba, as you just saw, just got pulled out a few minutes ago. I don't know if you guys saw it on TV or not, but the second they pulled him out, he gave a big giant thumbs up and said it's good to be home. So he's uh, he's doing well. The NASA people are around him now. The rest of the crew seems to be doing fine as well. So uh, all in all, a pretty, uh, a pretty beautiful and uh, by the boat day out here. Uh, this landing site. Josh, we had uh, excellent uh, television uh, most of the way down uh, with a couple of dropouts of uh, the Soyuz descending under the chute. It appeared to be an on-target bullseye touchdown. Yeah, it was exactly on target according to the uh, search and rescue forces out here. It was kind of, you know, you and I have both done dozens of these landings and, and I've never seen the amount of clarity that we had today in terms of all the helicopters we got in this big circle started flying around, and we actually saw uh, the parachute and the Soyuz coming down, and we saw the soft engine thrusters there during that last 
uh, split second. So, you know, sometimes we get lucky and see that view, but today we had it for for a, for a pretty extended time, actually. So uh, hopefully Carla Chofi, who's our photographer here, got some, got some pretty good pictures for us. And Josh, if you could outline for us uh, from this point on uh, what happens to the crew over the next uh, several minutes and uh, going airborne once again to go back to Kustanai. Yeah, the, the helicopters are actually all parked very close, uh, closer than what I've normally seen out here. The medical tent is uh, probably only about 60 yards away. They're going to get the crew uh, over there to the big orange medical tent and get them out of their suits uh, pretty quickly. Uh, the flight doctors will take uh, another look at them just to make sure that they're doing okay. And then we're all going to load up and head back to the airport at Coos tonight. Um, now, anybody who has seen these landings before knows that there's a traditional uh, ceremony that takes place back at the airport. They're going to have a shortened version of that ceremony today with all of the crew members. So we will have um, a, a somewhat of a ceremony there at the airport, but not, not the full one that we typically get. Um, the reason for that is they're just trying to get the crew uh, comfortable, get them They'll probably want to take a shower after they get back. And uh, obviously, Joe Acaba and the rest of us will uh, get on the NASA plane and head back to uh, Houston uh, in short order. And uh, Gennady Padalka and Sergey Revin will uh, head back to uh, Moscow uh, within a couple of hours after we get back. And we can see uh, the crew uh, now uh, being hoisted uh, in their reclining chairs to be brought inside the medical tent. It looks like an absolutely superb morning on Monday morning there weather-wise. Yeah, last time I was here was Mike Fossum landing back in December or November, December last year, and that was uh, quite a different experience uh, <laughs> than this time. So, uh, you know, if we could have them all like this, I think that we would all make that trade. But, they, but yeah, the weather's just it's gorgeous. There's a light wind. Um, and we're actually standing in a wheat field uh, that looks like it's been harvested, but, I mean, the ground is really good as well. You should enjoy it, Josh, because the next time you do this, in uh, about two months, uh, you'll be covering Sonny Williams. There's a unique uh, shot. We're watching Gennady Padalka signing his name uh, to the uh, Soyuz TMA 04M. Josh, the next time you do this in November, the landing for Sonny Williams, Aki Hoshide, and Yuri Malenchenko will be just after sunrise in November. I don't think it's going to be quite as warm. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I seem to attract the cold weather, but, uh, yeah, the one thing I, I do want to mention that I'm not sure that we talked about this yet or not, but there, the, the Russians are actually trying out, uh, some new versions of their all-terrain vehicles. These are much bigger, uh, and they, we had a landing commission meeting yesterday that we had with them, and they, they mentioned that they were using some new equipment, so they're testing that out. And uh, they're just they're enormous vehicles. I've never seen them uh, this large before, but uh, they seem to have worked uh, as expected. The crew uh, in the process of uh, being carried now uh, toward the medical tent, as you indicated, uh, they're going to get out of their launch and entry suits into more comfortable clothing, and uh, soon uh, we'll begin uh, yet another flight, this time a bit more mundane, uh, in a Russian Mi-8 helicopter, respective helicopters, back to Kustanai, and you'll be airborne uh, before long. And this, I've not seen this tradition before, where actually all the crew members sign their names uh, to the Soyuz spacecraft, to Kava about to uh, pen his name uh, to the side of the TMA 04M. Yeah, exactly. I've never I've never seen that before either. But they're uh, they're they're actually moving him across, probably about ten feet away from me right now. They're going to move him over into uh, the medical tent. I know that you mentioned Rob Bacon is here, the new chief astronaut. He's uh, sort of getting his trial run at this. This will be his uh, responsibility. So Peggy Whitson uh, is with him, kind of showing him the ropes and showing him what uh, they need to do to support the crew as they come back. And of course, this will be Peggy's probably her last uh, trip um, over here to do this. She's done numerous of these uh, Soyuz landings and also the launches, but it's over to, uh, over to Bob now uh, from this point on. And Josh, uh, as uh, the crew is uh, making their way inside the medical tent, uh, information is always uh, wonderful to come by and uh, from a variety of sources. Uh, we find out that uh, the signing of their names on the spacecraft unique to this particular landing because uh, this uh, spacecraft is going to be moved uh, to the uh, Shalkovsky Museum in Kaluga, uh, Russia. Uh, the Shalkovsky Museum named after the father of uh, 
Russian spaceflight Konstantin Shalkovsky. So a very unique and historic uh, moment uh, for this crew to have the privilege of signing their names to their spacecraft that brought them home. Yeah, that's, uh, that's quite a tradition. Um, they, they've actually just rolled the Soyuz over vertical. Uh, it, it's amazing to see these, these guys do this. They basically just kind of manhandle it and roll it over. Uh, but they're already in the process of getting it ready to be hoisted up and put on, and they're, you know, they're going to obviously take it back. Um, and we should be airborne back to Kusinai here within the next uh, few minutes. Uh, Josh Byerly at the landing site north of Arkalik. Uh, you can see uh, the panoramic view of some of the Russian Mi-8 helicopters, part of the search and recovery forces uh, that helped uh, to extract uh, the Expedition 32 crew, Gennady Padalka, Sergei Revin, and Joe Akaba, who are safely inside the medical tent uh, for initial medical exams and to get into more comfortable clothing before they go airborne in respective helicopters back uh, to Kustanai, Kazakhstan, the staging city for tonight's landing operations. Josh, I know you have to uh, hitch a ride uh, back to Kustanai yourself in your helicopter, so we wish you uh, safe travels, and we'll see you back in Houston. I'll see you back in Houston here in two hours, Rob. Thanks. Josh Byerly at the landing site in Kazakhstan with uh, his on-scene uh, report. Everything uh, went uh, by the book in extremely smooth fashion as uh, the crew is uh, hale and hearty, uh, safely outside uh, of their Soyuz TMA spacecraft that brought them home with the landing occurring just uh, 30 minutes ago at 9.53 p.m. Central Time, 10.53 p.m. Eastern Time, which equates uh, to 8.53 a.m. Kazakhstan Time on Monday morning. You can see uh, in this view one of the all-terrain vehicles that's part of the uh, search and recovery uh, Armada, if you will, uh, to attend uh, to the crew, backed up uh, to the flap entrance uh, to that inflatable, inflatable medical tent. Uh, you can see uh, as they open the door that each of the crew members is uh, placed inside that all-terrain vehicle for the short ride of just a few yards to their respective helicopters uh, so that they can board those helicopters for the flight back to Kustanai. And now you can see uh, some photographs being taken of the Soyuz uh, descent module now rolled upright as was reported a moment ago by NASA Public Affairs Officer Josh Byerly at the landing site while uh, search and recovery personnel and uh, RSC Energia engineers that uh, are responsible for the vehicle attend uh, to the spacecraft uh, before it is uh, transported uh, back to Russia uh, for post-flight analysis and in this case to be housed in the uh, Cholkovsky Museum in Kaluga, Russia and a good view inside uh, one of those all-terrain vehicles. Well, 